Okay, it's 11 o'clock and let's start for the webinar of today. A good morning, a good day or a good evening wherever you join our webinar today. A very warm welcome to our second digital coffee break of the single pair Ethernet industrial partner network of this year. I hope everyone has a nice coffee or something other to drink. Yeah, enjoy your coffee and of course also enjoy uh, the webinar we have today for you. Today, this webinar is supported from our member company Lab, and I'm very happy to have Ralf Möbus uh, with us today. Hello, Ralf. Very nice greetings to the south of Germany, and I hope you have also a nice coffee or something else to drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for the introduction, Matthias, and also warm welcome from my side. I have a coffee here, as you can see, and I hope uh, you too. So um, yes, enjoy the next hour and um, uh, I want to give you some insights today in uh, some more applications about um, uh, for single pair Ethernet and you know we are, have already talked a lot about the components and standards and all the things and uh, we think now it's the time at uh, the right time to talk more about the applications. Um, I'm heading the product management team in, uh, for industrial communication at Labkabel in Stuttgart and so yes enjoy and uh back to you matthias you have prepared some survey questions right yes of course yeah you can show the next slides already that we see the topic of today as you mentioned in the last coffee breaks we focused a lot of the single pair ethernet components you need to integrate the technology in your own devices and in different other aspects of the spe technology the focus of today are the possible applications for single pair Ethernet. And for this, we like also to go in closer contact with you and we invite you all to use the chat function, the question and answer session to give us some feedback, some ideas and so on. And before I hand, hand over to Ralph and to start the real presentation for today, I want to have a short survey with you to get a little bit more information about the relevance of single pair Ethernet for your company, your daily work, and maybe also your product development. And I guess my colleague in the background, yeah, here is a short survey for you. So feel free to choice the right uh, answer you want to give. And the questions I have to, for you here is today, how important is single pair Ethernet technology already today? And what are your company's plans for it? So the first answer for this question is very relevant. We plan already a design in or with single pair Ethernet. Very, re very relevant, but currently no future steps planned for single pair Ethernet. Relevant, we currently inform ourselves or not so relevant, not starting any project yet. So feel free to choice uh, yeah, to choose the right answer for your company and you can do it also during yeah, the next minutes. And we will give you the overview about this survey after this presentation when we also answer your questions and have a little bit more discussions with you. Okay, I see already a lot of answers here and this is the right point uh, where we can really start our presentation for, for today. And for this, I will hand over yeah, to Ralph. And I'm happy to, to hear what you have in the presentation for us today. So thanks and the presentation is in your hands now. Okay, thank you. Um, so, just uh, in the beginning, a few words about LAP. I think maybe some of you already know us, but um, yes, we are a very global company. Um, we have globally uh, 18 production sites and uh, about 44 uh, sales companies uh, everywhere in the world. And we are, have about 4,650 uh, employees. 
And um, yes, we are talking about uh, a lot of products um, that we are offering to our customers, mainly in the field of industrial cabling and connectivity. This is uh, what is our DNA and where we come from. But uh, nowadays we are more and more also focusing uh, on for us a strategic, very important topic, industrial communication. And also the topic that we are talking today with uh, Singer Pay Ethernet. And so, um, yes, this is something um, where we have a very strategic uh, focus on. And so we have a um, annual turnover in the last year of about uh, 1.4 billion uh, euros. And uh, just to give you an impression of uh, the size of LAP and who we are. So single pair Ethernet, um, very interesting technology and also for us a very strategic, uh, important topic. I think um, it's very trivial uh, that um, this, uh, to, that it is very interesting for industrial use cases um, if we can transmit uh, Ethernet via a single pair um, instead of uh, multi-pair, two pairs or four pair that we have today in the uh, in our Ethernet cables. And so we see that um, single-pair Ethernet is really a game changer and is an important technology uh, for the industrial Internet of Things. That means it will help us more and more to realize Industry 4.0 applications because now we have the chance to bring a very economical physical layer really down uh, to the sensors and actuators on the lowest field level. So very interesting, important technology. So what is it really changing? Um, so looking at today's um, automation or industrial communication pyramid, then you know um, we have several levels. We have the ERP systems, we have the PLC systems, and uh, on the lowest level, the field level, we have simple input and output signals uh, coming from sensors or also from actuators. And uh, today there are still many, um, we can say proprietary technologies in use, field bus uh, technologies, and there's still a gap uh, when we want to access these devices on the lowest field level. And now with single pair Ethernet, we have really the chance to, to close this gap and to integrate um, this lowest field level, these devices that we can find there directly in our Ethernet network, which uh, enables us to access this huge amount of data uh, on the field level and make it available for other systems in the network without the need uh, to having gateways or translators, which make it very uncomfortable to use and also very high cost and uh, with high, very high effort to integrate the lowest field level. So this is um, a, a few on uh, what we are talking about. If we look at the industrial network, uh, on the left hand side, you can see a machine that is how it is today realized without SPE. That means, um, as I already said, there we can find this uh, field bus technologies, but we can also find simple discrete signals um, for IOs and inputs and out. Uh, that means sensors um, which are connected or but not completely connected to the to the Ethernet network. So they are connected today, for instance, uh, with remote IOs. And on the right side, you can see um, a machine, how we think um, it could be done uh, with single pair Ethernet. And that means um, many devices now are connected uh, with single pair Ethernet. That means uh, um, on the lowest field level where we find the remote IOs could be directly integrated in the remote IO and replace um, Profinet cables or Ethernet cables cut five that we are using there, multi-pair cables to reduce the wiring effort, or it even can integrate directly uh, sensors in that uh, network and make them accessible. So a short recap about uh, which uh, protocol standards are we talking about. Um, I don't want to go too deep in the, in the standards part because I think that we have already seen a lot of presentations about the standards and uh, the, the status of the standards. But um, just to build the fundament for you um, that you can understand what are really the 
the uh, benefits um, in certain applications i think it makes sense to uh, give you that quick overview um, of the standards beginning on the on the highest level there um, or on, the, on that uh, second level because this is what we mainly see as interesting um, for industrial communication applications um, this a standard called ieee 802.3 bp and bv and there we have the opportunity uh, to build networks with uh, 100 megabit per second or one gigabit per second and reach a cable length of um, up to 40 meters um, with um, shielded cables so this is our standards that are very interesting and relevant for the for the factory and uh, on the lowest level there we can find also a standard that enables us to um, transmit data rates of 10 megabit per second this is 802.3 cg um, this uh, enables us to transmit 10 megabit per second uh, via distance up to 1000 meters and uh, so you see this is very interesting also for longer distances where we have today somehow the field bus performance you know uh, the good old profi bus um, had a distance of 1200 meters um, with lowest data rates and uh, so now we are coming again in this class that we can have much higher link lengths um, that um, we don't have today uh, for instance with standard ethernet where we usually or where we have 100 megabit uh, 100 meters um, distance that we can bridge on in a link length and uh, without using uh, fiber optics so what is the status at the moment for the technologies um, to understand that it's also important to look at the component uh, side um, so um, we have a lot of connectors in the funnel that will be prepared uh, for for single pay ethernet and um, you see uh, for a lot of applications uh, we will have the right connectors available um, sure for ip20 environment in the cabinet um, we have a, a version of a connector um, and also uh, for in outside the cabinet that means uh, ip67 environment m8 or m12 connectors are in uh, preparation and um, then also connectors special types like push pull which enables uh, very uh, quick interconnection of devices that means um, you really see there um, will be the whole infrastructure available everything that is needed um, for quick and standardized uh, connection of single pair ethernet um, devices and standardizing um, is something that's very important here and uh, that's also something that has to be considered really in the beginning of uh, single pair ethernet that means that we really have uh, standardized devices um, that at the end we don't have too much um, incompatibility, incompatibilities um, of devices on the market and ensure that everything works fine uh, together. So cables, also for cables there we have um, standards. Um, this is the IEC 61156. Um, standard where we uh, have cables uh, assorted to uh, special uh, assorted to uh, different uh, cross sections and different um, applications um, also uh, different installation types for instance um, we have the awg 26 version which is um, suitable for one gigabit uh, per second up to 40 meters or we have the awg 22 version um, which will have a reach for up to 40 meters and this, this is the version which is also optimized for portal that means power supply via the data cable and uh, then we have aw2 WG18 version, uh, which is suitable for 10 megabit and up to 1000 meter of range. And uh, 
then all the um, application types or the installation types that you can find in typical industrial applications um, you can find also uh, in that standards and we have also for these types um, also uh, cables already available or in development so for fixed installation for flexible installation continuous flexible uh, installation in drag chains or also for robotic applications uh, we will have cables so this is the portfolio what is already uh, available from lab that means um, we have uh, started with um, um, a, a small range that means um, which covers most of the industrial applications for single pair ethernet but we have a lot of uh, new cables also in our roadmap and in the in development that means also for new applications that are coming up now and also special applications um, we will have um, cables for every um, application that you can imagine in industrial environment solutions available um, if you look at um, what we have today, for instance, for Profinet, um, then you can assume that um, for single pair Ethernet also we need a similar range because um, a lot, because of the lot of applications we see here. So now let's dive deeper in um, the single pair Ethernet applications. Um, but first of all, I want to ask you a question um, what applications do you see today um, for single pair ethernet what you think um, could be interesting where it can provide really a benefit for you or what you may be already uh, planning where you want to use single pair ethernet we are very curious to to learn about that and um, so please um, use the chat function for this and uh, enter just um, your let's say your ideas or your applications that you that you see there so maybe about 14 40 uh, seconds uh, then i go ahead just to give you the opportunity to to enter your answers So we, we take that point uh, later on at the end of the um, presentation and uh, also we share that um, information uh, about the answers that have been entered. So single pair Ethernet applications. Um, if you look at this, um, this slide here, uh, then you can see that you, you can find of a lot of applications in a lot of industries uh, where we think that single pair ethernet can be uh, really a game changer so uh, today i want to focus mainly on the industrial environment part and uh, in the factory that means um, we are talking about applications um, that um, are mainly there used but um, uh, also for other industries um, it could be uh, very interesting yeah for instance for a smart grid uh, or also for for mobile applications yeah every sort of mobile application could be interesting because uh, for sure um, we have a um, weight reduction and also space requirement reduction um, from the single pair ethernet and that's always interesting also um, for uh, mobile applications um, or for instance, um, energy production, that means uh, for now for new renewable energies, for instance, solar plants, uh, where you often have to bridge high distances, um, they could use also, um, or can make use of such a standard that enables you to go via 1000 meters or 
we have already new applications uh, in where, where we see it um, for example for wave uh, power plants um, that are used in the sea they also have the bridge uh, high distances there and yeah, a lot of um, customers and also industries um, at the moment thinking about how they uh, can use single pay ethernet in their applications so but now let's go deeper in as promised um, in the industrial applications um, dynamic application uh, first application here um, what does that mean um, for instance um, uh, that's everywhere where cables are moved and this can be in a track chain for example um, where we have um, a constant bending of the cable and we know that um, just using one single pair in a cable is on the one hand um, enables us to build cables um, that are more um, reliable and durable uh, to withstand um, that that force uh, that we have there yeah so we can reduce also the wear of the cable and make um, more reliable cable and um, also um, we have for sure which is interesting a uh, space and weight reduction um, the smaller this uh, the cable is um, the smaller we can build the drag chain but uh, also we can at the end have lower bending radius that means um, if we can reduce the bending radius with a thin cable, um, then we can also use um, smaller drag chains uh, with lower bending radius. And at the end, also, we can sp uh, save space <coughs> in the machine. So today in these applications, usually um, our Profinet cables uh, uh, are used for uh, industrial control systems um, where we have to connect for example to a remote io um, but uh, also um, other ethernet cables sometimes also um, cat 7 cables or cat 6 cables for for gigabit ethernet are used um, if we have for example cameras uh, that are moved and that have to be supplied uh, with data via the track chain So another example of a <clears throat> dynamic application is uh, robotic. Um, if you look at robots, um, then you usually have um, that area in the robot where you have torsional stress of the cables. Yeah, that means um, coming from the robot foot, going to the, um, the tool, the gripper of the robot, um, there we have a cable that must withstand um, constant uh, torsion and bending of the cable. For Profinet, for instance, we are talking about type R cable. Uh, this is a special robot uh, cable that can withstand um, these forces. And um, so today we are mainly talking about CAT5, two pair CAT5 Ethernet cables uh, if we want to connect to remote IO. But as I said before, and at the track chain application, also, sometimes we have a camera, for instance, on the robot, then it could also happen that we need um, gigabit performance here um, to get the pictures from the camera. So could be that means it could be data rights uh, somehow between 100 megabit per second or one gigabit per second. Um, if we are talking about also typical industrial control um, protocols, but even uh, also 10 megabit per second could be um, a possible solution for this um, if we talk um, about uh, yeah that that standard uh, that offers only 10 megabit but higher cable lengths yeah. and yeah sure at the, such a robot you can imagine that um, they always have limitations uh, in space sometimes you have uh, small holes where you have to go through with the cable or uh, you have a so-called dress pack at the robot robot which is a tube where all the cables are inside and if you can save some space there um, it's very highly appreciated and uh, very good for the for the application but also weight for sure is a topic uh, because you have um, 
it's a dynamic application and you are moving uh, that robot and uh, if you can reduce the weight um, that has to be moved at the end you can also save energy and um, have, uh, have lower dynamic load um, on such a robot so also same benefit um, for the cable as we have seen it for the track chain um, we have a cable with very good um, dynamic properties um, itself so that means uh, we have the chance to build cables that are uh, much more durable uh, in such applications uh, than we had before with multi-pair cables So sensor actuator, a uh, very important application um, for single pair Ethernet, uh, because as I said at the beginning, when you are looking at this pyramid, then uh, we see that um, single pair Ethernet will be really that game changer that uh, will connect the lowest field level um, to the rest of the network. So that means, um, so it's important uh, to talk about sensor actuator and uh, on that important applications for single pace and, and what is a typical uh, sensor actor application in in a um, industrial automation system usually for if we're talking about sensors then um, we have to transmit the signals uh, via a remote io which is connected to for instance profinet or ethernet and uh, communicates the sensor signals to the PLC. So this is the, let's say, the, the main applications. But uh, for sure, also in, in practical use, we can also find some other applications where maybe the, the, the data don't have to end at the PLC. For instance, if we're talking about cameras again, uh, then uh, that uh, picture of the camera maybe has to be communicated not to the PLC but uh, to a, a image processing unit or industrial computer, something like this. So um, also this can be um, application or use case. So, uh, but thinking now, um, now let, let's stay with this um, remote I/O to PLC in this example here. Um, today's typical solution is. Um, we have the remote IOs connected with um, two pair CAT5 Ethernet cables um, with M12D or arch coded connector, or maybe if it's installed in a cabinet, RG45 connectors. And um, also, what we still see a lot of um, in, in a lot of applications, there we see also special non Ethernet systems like. Um, uh, AS interface or IO link or maybe also a profi bus um, where we don't have the integration of Ethernet at all at the moment. So what are typical requirements? Um, so as you see on the right side here, um, we have very often um, daisy chain cabling. That means the devices are connected in a series um, and uh, they're mainly in the field that means they have to be ip67 in um, protection and uh, also um, we what we also need is um, there is very robust or flexible or highly flexible uh, cables and patch cords because we are in the field environment, we are not in the cabinet or maybe on the cable tray. That means uh, we need also robust types here. And uh, yes, what are the protocols that are usually used here? As already mentioned, um, it's mainly Profinet, um, which is usually um, up to 100 megabit um, for the devices. But uh, also we can imagine that um, some other um trans transmission speeds could be uh useful here for instance 10 megabit per second if we do a uh, also direct sensor integration for example then this could be uh interesting or maybe one gigabit per second um if you have also uh, sensors that have to transmit um higher data rates like, again like cameras um 
we see that uh, this could happen maybe in two evolution stages. Um, maybe they don't go one after each other. Maybe they are also will be developed in parallel. Um, we know that a lot of sensor manufacturers are already considering um, single pair Ethernet use. But um, looking at the first stage, um, then we see um, that uh, it could replace um, today's uh, Ethernet cables for, that are used uh, to connect the remote I.O. to the PLC. In this case, the st sensor will stay the same. That means um, we have only simple discrete cabling or maybe I.O. link or something like this. That means no direct uh, Ethernet integration in the sensor. But uh, the really big benefit and the real uh, change, game changer here will be um, a direct integrated, uh, direct sensor integrated SPE interface because this enables us a lot of more um, um, yeah, benefits for the, for the sensor. Um, for instance, uh, we have direct access to the sensor via the Ethernet network. That's not possible if we don't have a di direct uh, single pay Ethernet integ or direct Ethernet integration in the sensor. We don't need remote IOs in this case, uh, but then maybe we need single pay Ethernet switches. So that means um, for having different topologies available there, for instance, star topology, ring, or daisy chain, or something like this. Um, using a single pair Ethernet switch uh, could enable us a lot of more flexibility um, in creating new topologies. Yeah, we can even think about um, uh, cascading of switches, and then we have the huge possibilities of very flexible topologies um, that we know from Ethernet already. And um, yes, with direct sensor integrated network interface. You can simply use a browser at the end, and you can maybe do diagnostic um, uh, on directly on the on the sensor. Uh, if, if it is a camera, for instance, you can directly see that picture from your laptop and uh, your browser that you are using. All these things are not possible um, if you don't have a, a direct sensor integrated um, network interface. And so we see. We could for sure do this already, this existing Ethernet technology, um, do that integration in the sensor. But um, the single pair Ethernet, um, now we have uh, economical um, integration in the sensor. Yeah. Yes, in the past, uh, this multi pair Ethernet cables it was maybe too expensive uh, to integrate um, uh, Ethernet interface directly in, the, in, the, in, a, in a very small, low cost sensor. Or it must maybe also too too big um, because the cable was in the diameter too thick or the connector too big uh, to integrate it um, directly in a in a sensor. So now we have that a chance and that possibilities uh, to do that and at the end to reach all these um, new features that we can have in the sensors then. So another interesting thing, um, but maybe also not um, easy to use um, thing is uh, multi-drop, um, which is also defined in the standard um, 802.3 CG for 10 megabit Ethernet. And um, what does that mean? Uh, multi-drop is a connection of um, um, a, a simple drop line connection on, on, a, on a physical way, uh, that means you just need some T connectors, um, not a switch or a hub or something like this to connect a cable to um, another single pay Ethernet cables. That means you can build uh, so called drop lines uh, with this. That makes it for sure very uh, cost effective uh, because it's no active component there to connect here and maybe um, also very low space and uh, very easy to connect. Um, but to, to say the truth, um, that's also um, in this case, 
uh, it's uh, uh, there is a, a challenge that we have to deal with. Um, that's the real-time capability. For instance, um, you know, uh, for for industrial control systems like um, Rofinet or Ethernet IP, today um, there's a need to use uh, switches in the network to ensure that no net, not two devices can access the network at the same time. This uh, at the is at the end um, regulated by the switch. It takes care that there are no collisions are happening on the network. And this is something that uh, could happen if we do an installation of this type. That means we need additional measures to avoid this. Uh, for instance, on protocol level, uh, or also it can be a measure that is maybe done with a planning rule. Uh, that means that if we limit or if we do a segmentation of the network and we limit the devices in, the, in, the, in this network where we allow these um, drop lines, uh, then we can uh, also um, create such uh, such topologies. Um, and But it's not just simple using and uh, connecting now like it is with existing um, planning rules and also um, protocols that we have today. There are also some additional measures uh, needed. So in control cabinet, um, what does that mean? Uh, that means we have uh, on, on machine level, um, we usually have uh, cabinets there where we have um, typical automation um, devices inside. This is for sure on the one hand, we have a PLC, or we have also drive system usually in there, or we have maybe a um, uh, um, human machine interface, uh, where the, um, which is a, a panel or something like this. And all the things are at the end uh, connected in that cabinet via switches in a, most of the time a star-shaped uh, topology. That means we have a switch and uh, all the devices are connected to that switch. And usually we have uh, data rates there um, that go from 100 megabit uh, to 1 gigabit. Um, 100 megabit usually is enough for Profinet devices. But um, if we go um, on the higher level machine to machine communication or also machine to the um, um, uh, ERP systems and uh, the rest of the building network, then we usually have higher data rates. That means we also have in this case, for instance, uh, one gigabit or, or more uh, that we need there. So inside the cabinet, um, sure, um, space is money. Uh, we can say it like this, the smaller we can build the cabinet, uh, the more uh, money we save. and um, so we have an advantage if we have a technology like single pair Ethernet, which has lower space requirements uh, in the cable raceways in the cabinet, and uh, we have lower ba smaller bending side uh, bending radius there. Uh, that means we can really build at the end also uh, smaller cabinets if we can sp save there some space. Um, usually, for sure, that's trivial. trivial. It's IP20 connection technology, um, and very often also pre-assembled patch cords are used. That means uh, that's uh, the typical uh, installation inside a cabinet. But um, we see also field-assembled connectors there um, for that cables that are going out of the cabinet, uh, going in the field from machine to machine or to some uh, field devices. Yes, already mentioned, uh, a lot of advantages, um, reduction of space requirements in the cabinet. And also, we can build for sure, not just smaller cables, we can build also smaller devices like switches or PLCs and all the devices that are connected here. Um, with single pair Ethernet, we have smaller sockets and uh, we can build much smaller devices. So power supply. 
that's also an important aspect of um, single pair Ethernet, especially um, if we look at the, at the main target application, uh, go down on the lowest field level, then we have um, several opportunities now to supply these um, devices with power via the cable. And there's one possibility that's so-called PODL, power over data line, which is perfect uh, for powering sensors with uh, low, lower power. That means um, we can have this PODL up to 50 watts, uh, which is enough for most of the uh, sensors that we see today, which are usually usually using one to ten watts, that means uh, enough power to to power them. And uh, for sure, at the end, um, if we can use PODL, um, then we can reduce also the cabling effort uh, dramatically because we don't need an additional cable uh, to to power the devices. And for sure, we can reduce the uh, cores in the cable to just two cores. Yeah? If you look at a typical um, sensor cable with uh, discrete signals that we use today, very often in such applications, then uh, we need at minimum three cores, uh, ground, uh, plus, and uh, signal. And uh, in this case, we have uh, also possibility to re reduce that cabling effort. For hybrid, uh, that's another um, possibility for supplying um, higher power. That means we have so-called hybrid cables and connectors that we are using here. <clears throat> that means um, we have two cores for the, for the single pair Ethernet cables inside. And uh, we have some more cores uh, or pins in the connector for powering the device. That means in this case, we can have higher cross sections for the um, power cores, uh, depending <clears throat> on the application. Um, if you look at typical actuators uh, that we are talking today, so-called uh, decentral drives, um, which are smart drives, which have the frequency converter on their back. And um, then we see usually um, uh, um, power supply needs of 1.5 kilowatts up to 5 kilowatts. Um, <clears throat> and then we can have this power supply also uh, with some additional cores in the cable, depending for sure on that application that we are using and uh, the power we need to transmit. Um, uh, there can be different cables uh, with different cross section. But also, again, standardization important here. Uh, you see on the right side two connectors that are already brought in the um, standardization M8 hybrid, very small and tiny one, and also M12 hybrid um, with, um, for supplying more power. Uh, that means also for supplying small to medium sized uh, drives. And uh, so also there we see the standardization um, already in place. Yeah. So yes, advantages, for sure, a lot of advantages in reducing the cabling, cabling effort. Even if you use PODL, we need only two cores. Um, we can use the standard single pair ethernet cable. And uh, if we use um, hybrid, then we can supply even more power uh, with some more cores in the cable. So now our application, I said today, um, we are mainly focusing on the industrial application, but I think uh, since this is also very interesting um, to see, um, that's railway. Um, we see at the moment also a lot of um, activities um, for using single pair Ethernet in, in railway applications because it has a lot of benefits there today in drains. Uh, we have a lot of communication systems in there. On the one hand, we have this so-called 
MVB, multifunction vehicle bus. That means that it's a CAN bus uh, today, or can is even also already available uh, in on an Ethernet basis uh, with multi-pair Ethernet cable. But uh, this is the bus which is used inside uh, a car, um, uh, inside the cabin. And uh, then we have the wired rain bus, which is uh, that communication system that runs uh, through the complete train, that means from cabin to cabin. And um, today, mainly multi pair Ethernet and uh, CAN bus are used. And uh, in the case of, um, for instance, passenger entertainment system, which, which you can also find a lot of there, uh, that means um, providing Wi Fi to the passengers or providing um, also. Uh, um, some other services like uh, ticket systems or things like this uh, for passengers, then you find there already also um, multi-pair Ethernet cables with higher data rates in the gigabit range. So um, there are some special requirements inside the um, drain for sure. Um, we have, for instance, uh, high uh, requirements for fire protection, uh, but also sometimes and this depends on for higher data rates um, for the entertainment system. We have for sure um, also vibration. That means uh, we usually have uh, connectors that are also uh, certified um, for use in such uh, railway applications. Um, and sure, weight is a topic and space requirement is a topic. But uh, for sure, if you can reduce the weight in such uh, in such a drain, then uh, at the end, for sure, you can imagine we can reduce the CO, the carbon uh, uh, footprint um, of such uh, such a drain because we are saving energy to move the drain. So this was. Uh, last application in that um in that format here and uh so it was today only uh seven applications um to give you an, first some first ideas um, where uh, single pair ethernet can bring a lot of benefit but um as you have seen in that uh, slide that i have shown about the different industries where single pair ethernet could be used uh, then you can imagine that we will see there are a lot of more applications coming up and uh, where the customers want to use uh, single pay Ethernet and uh, also some, um, yeah, many new applications. So, and also that's what we are interested in. Uh, what do you think about applications? And this is the reason why uh, also we asked that question um, to give you an insight. Uh, what you are planning or what you which ideas do you have yeah so um at this point um i give back uh to matthias yeah thanks a lot ralph for all this detailed information about possible applications if you look to the number of persons joining our coffee break today we see it's a big interest and this will be also reflected in the answers we get from the survey we have at the beginning. And if you look here, 40% um, of you already mentioned that single pay Ethernet is very relevant and we plan a design in. If I compare this with some survey we did one year ago, when 10% move over from the second question, very relevant, but currently no future steps. So we see. Uh, the interest in the market to to really use this technology becomes more and more imp important. And also the other group who is saying relevant, relevant, but currently just collecting information and so on, it's, it's really uh, on the same high level as we see it in the past. So single pay Ethernet definitely is interesting. And so that's why let's a little bit go on mm, discussion also and have a look on the question we got in the in the chat. First short story from my side. So when I joined the business life in 2000 around, when bus systems are just in the market dominating and 
uh, bus systems coming from the control uh, are higher level going down to the control and sensor actuator level. And later on, with, with industrial Ethernet like Profinet, Ethercat, and so on, the same situation was coming up. So today, industrial Ethernet systems dominating the switch cabinets. At the control level, level, we have still a lot of bus systems also uh, discrete wiring. So my personal expectation is that single pair Ethernet will come the opposite way, starting at the sensor level and then going to a higher level. Ralph, do you see this similar or what is your meaning? So, yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I see it somehow similar, but uh, I see it also a little bit, um, uh, let's say, uh, I, I think the, because the question is always, uh, in future we always just see single pair Ethernet cables in Ethernet networks. And so let's try it like this. Uh, so I think at the moment uh, we are talking about um, just the sensor actuator integration. That's uh, really at the moment, let's say the pain point and that we can solve with single pair Ethernet and uh, where we can integrate this, this layer in the network. So where we don't have a really suitable solution today. Yeah. For the higher levels on the control level or let's say the building uh, network level, um, there we have um, already solutions in place. Yeah, uh, that means there's the, at the uh, to say it like this. Um, at the moment, the pain not that big. Yeah, but um, for sure, since we have a very um, interesting low effort and very economical physical layer available, then for sure uh, in some more applications on that levels, uh, we will also find maybe in future thing in Ethernet. But um, I think there's also maybe a limit um, where the, the, to, to consider um, what is, um, uh, or where could be the, the limit. Um, for instance, um, today we have a very huge infrastructures in the buildings and also in the factory with multi-pair cables. Yeah? So, there we also need uh, to ensure somehow the compatibility uh, to that network. For instance, if you have a computer, um, which is more an office computer or something like this, that you want to connect to the network, then you won't, won't not do this with single pair Ethernet, you do it with uh, usually standard multi-pair Ethernet. So that means to ensure also to the um, IT systems that compatibility on the physical level, um, we see that uh, multi-pair Ethernet cables or connectors also in future um, have a, um, are needed. Yeah. 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 I definitely totally agree. So single pair Ethernet will be not the solution or the technology to replace everything what we have with Ethernet today. It will be an adding technology to fill how we tell it at IEEE the Ethernet gap in the sensor actuator level. So this is definitely one way, yeah. Other application that I, we see also some um, remarks here in the question answer areas are, I will say a little bit like closed system. Yeah, if you have here's shipbuilding, smart shipbuilding is, is mentioned, you mentioned railway, so that are more or less closed applications. I guess here also single pair Ethernet could be the major technology in, in some years because, as you mentioned, less weight, less space, and it's a closed application where you can create your own system based on uh, Ethernet technology, based on single pair Ethernet, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I think so. Um, uh, yeah. Very, very uh, good application, uh, very, have a lot of more benefits, um, uh, especially also that uh, that weight and space reduction and um, yeah it is a closed system somehow and um, also uh, yes sure maybe for the highest data rates yeah it goes then for 10 gigabits or something like this then it could happen that maybe um, for instance if you want to provide wi passenger wi-fi or such things then they would need category 7 and um, 10 gigabit and in this case, uh, maybe there still will be also some um, uh, uh, multi-pair Ethernet cables, but uh, I see there's a great uh, chance for coexistence because uh, we are now using 
technologies that um, enable us a seamless Ethernet network, yeah, the single pair Ethernet and also uh, multi pair Ethernet. And they are at the end also compatible um, because all they are IP based networks, yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Definitely, it's it's a way how it will be implemented in the market. I have here one very special question. Um, I guess we have some minutes time so we can give an answer here. This question was related to the multi-drop and the question here was one of our yeah, members today, um, how the power will be distributed. And um, if I, it's okay for, for you, Ralph, I will answer it. So the, the today's standard we have for multi-drop is not ready for power like we have it for all the other standards where we can use Poodle. So the multi-drop today is not compatible with Poodle. So that's why the hybrid connector could be an option to have power separately distributed to the different devices. Yeah. Can be that will be changed in the future. IEEE work on an enhancement of multi-drop to add power and some other options. But today this is not supported from from this multi-drop standard. Yeah. So some other uh, Me, uh, um, informations we see here, uh, as we mentioned, sensors are definitely um, an application where some of our yeah, um, members have this, have a focus on it. And definitely, yeah, here is a market for for things. Um, here come another question in. Uh, Are there currently any Poodle delivery components, systems, injectors, switches already in the market? Yeah. Do you have an answer for this, uh, or should I? Um, I, so I have. I I have there are a lot of things in development, and um, so for sure, also um, uh, switches. And uh, I've seen the first uh, SPE switches also on the market. I don't think uh, already with um, with. Poodle, but um, sure, it will be a feature that uh, typically will be in the in the switch, or also is a separate injector. Yeah, these are typical yeah. products that we will see here. Yeah. yeah if you look to the passive, yeah, if you look to the passive components, everything is prepared for Poodle. Uh, important are the active components. So we have information about the magnetics, uh, the common mode chokes you need. Uh, you can find also such informations. And our website, there is a chapter uh, called resources. And beside white papers and application notes, there are also uh, application notes about power or the MDI integration. Here we have already some information. Poodle controllers itself are on the way. Uh, some semiconductor companies offer already some development ports. Yeah, if you need some more detailed information, you can contact me also directly uh, at LinkedIn, for example. You can we can share this information with you. Yeah. And in general, I want to give you some some background also about the single pair Ethernet industrial partner network. So we are a team with around 52 companies worldwide, and uh, like we show here today at this webinar, our Target is to bring this technology based on single pay to the market, share the know how our members have, and give you all the information also you need to start your own development. That's why we have our website with application notes and some more, and we will update this website very regular. You can also join our network, of course, and you have the contact directly to all the experts from different market. Uh, applications and market uh, um, points. So we have, uh, as we have today, the, the colleagues from lab with us, we have many companies focusing on the passive infrastructure cables and connectors, but also companies who take care for the needed magnetic components. So I will call here, for example, TDK from Japan, Word Electronics and some others. And we have a close relationship also to the semiconductor industry so that we can help everyone to go in the market with single pay ethernet and that's why if you have interest contact us or of course you can join our network it's a powerful network and we are growing 
every month with new members. And then you can get also more detailed information directly from the members and you can make networking inside yeah, this, this powerful association. So um, I hope all of you get some insights what is possible with single pay Ethernet, what could be possible. I guess there are more ideas um, possible and in your minds already. So thanks for attending this webinar today. As I mentioned, have a look also at our website, singlepair-ethernet.com, and there, there's a place for resources in German and English also. And we have a next digital coffee plate planned uh, in the middle of March, so at the 23th of, of March. And in this coffee break, we will present some very technical details about how to test and check your devices in the combination with different EMC relations, with different cable configurations and so on. More information we will submit very soon on our LinkedIn channel and with newsletters. So I hope you enjoy this very interesting presentation from Lab and from Ralph today. Get some ideas where single event can be used. And yeah, thanks from my side a lot for attending and Ralph for presenting all these details to us today. Thanks also from my side from for attending. And yes, now enjoy your lunch after the coffee. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Have a look at our website and see you soon. Bye. Bye-bye.